Um, it being 6 o'clock, I call the selectmen's meeting to order. Um, are there any changes or additions to the agenda? Uh, yes. Uh, we need to add an interest waiver request from Eversource and the appointment forms for the Energy Commission appointments. Which I think um, is on the printed ones everybody has, I think. Yeah. yeah. I would also like to add um, a discussion to close the transfer station Saturday due to the wind chills and the weather on Saturday um, to the new business. So, okay. um, moving on from that, uh, EPA Grant Presentation Transfer Station Improvement Committee. Well, we'll start right off. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, I'm going to read this just because I want to make sure I get all the points across and I'll have the <laughs> deeds, uh, to have for the record. <clears throat> I'm here tonight as the chair of the Transfer Station Improvement Committee to discuss the EPA grant application. It is our hope that the select board will accept this application and apply for the available funds. Let me begin by saying the Transfer Station Improvement Committee is not asking the town to raise any additional money for this project. If the EPA grant is not awarded, we will try for other grants. If no grants come through, we will work to scale the project so that it will fit within the approved budget from the 2022 town meeting. Here's some background information. The EPA is a competitive federal grant and seeks to fund large projects. The minimum request for this grant is $500,000. The maximum is $4 million. Uh, to qualify for the EPA grant, we added some new equipment totaling $151,695. We also updated our previous equipment quotes that we had received. These had increased dramatically due to inflation. The original equipment has now increased by 90830 With the updated timeline on the project, we could now factor in the anticipated in inflation cost, which is about $300,000 from the initial time. The total for the equipment and inflation puts us at the threshold to apply for this grant. <clears throat> Our original project was $1.4 million project with $493,000 coming from the USDA grant, which was awarded to the town. In January of this year, the select board hired Sanborn Head and Associates to engineer the project. We request, requested that the engineering firm to submit new cost estimates that we could use in the grant application to the EPA. This was a difficult task for Sanborn Head Associates as they had not yet done the design component for the facility. When the estimates came in from the engineers, the Transfer Station Improvement Committee were shocked at the dramatic increase in the cost. These cost increase are in the grant application. Our committee feels that it's in the best interest of the town to move forward with a grant request to the EPA. The EPA grant is a non-matching grant, thus no additional town monies need to be uh, need, needed from the town. Again, we're not asking the town to raise more money, we're asking the select board to apply for this grant to improve the transfer station. This is an opportunity to make a long shot from half court. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. <laughs> Thank you for your time. What's the timeline for the grant? Did I miss that? The timeline? It's to... due in their hands no later than February 15th, so it needs to be in on the 14th. So what's the um, estimated additional cost for the transfer station right now? The whole project, let me get in the grant paperwork, the I can break down what certain components yeah. increase. So the, the total project cost for the whole thing, hang on, $4,526,088. We're, we're requesting from the EPA $3,159,708. And then the town puts in what we'd already agreed for, is, which is approximately 1,366,380. I guess I'm, uh, I'll just say I'm not completely surprised at the numbers. I mean, I am, it's a little shocking. I was thinking maybe 2 million, but four is a lot higher. Um, 
four and a half. Wow. <laughs> We At that point, what's another five hundred thousand? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> draws all drop. The, uh, the numbers. I was I spoke I spoke to uh, Ron, the design engineer. At, uh, I think it was today. I forget if it was yesterday. Today. It must have been today because I was I wanted to understand why the numbers went up so much. And a big part of it is uh, they were told go big because you have to go big for the EPA grant. So the the size of the building is almost double. And the only reason we would ever think of building a big building, it, honestly, is if somebody else pays for it. Um, at $135 per square foot is how they estimated the cost per square foot. And so. I guess my concern with, with it isn't, isn't the initial cost. I mean, yeah. it's, is our estimation to run this transfer station going to quadruple compared to what we had originally estimated? I don't believe so. We're still handling the same amount of trash. Well, I... I understand that, but our buildings are doubling, our infrastructure is doubling. But it's going to be more efficient. Like if you can picture, like in Guilford, all the bays are like yeah. right next. I to I just each know other. if I had asked the question six months ago, um, do you think this transfer station is going to quadruple? You would have all said no to me. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty confident. I mean, in pr price shocked. wise, I, um, I, I, I'm <laughs> just saying. Right. So my concern is 20 years from now. Because I'm young, I'm gonna be here for a while, hopefully. I'm not saying, We're all here 20 years from now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm 30, 40 years yeah. from now. Okay, maybe. Still gonna be here. Um, but that's my concern. Isn't the initial cost? I, I, I mean, it's quite a project. I'm, unfortunately, a million dollars in today's world isn't all that much money. Um, I just hope that it's not three quarters of a million to run every year. That's all. Yeah, I think that's my concern. No, I agree with you. Um, a building that size, good. the operating cost is bound to go up. That's yeah. my fear. It's that also much the, that, right. That, yeah. It's a, I think it's everything included. But I, that that I the initial cost, I'm unfortunately not as shocked as I th should be. But um, I've, I've heard that same sentiment from others in town that <clears throat> they're they're concerned that suddenly there'll be six people working there, you know, <laughs> instead of three. Uh, I yeah, so, I wouldn't. Hopefully that's not the case. Yeah, but, I, um, yeah, I don't think it would probably take six. A, yeah. Can I ask a, as a taxpayer, not as this person? So, isn't the point though that because the the cost of sending trash anywhere is so high, that this system allows it to be bundled and get cheaper? Yes. And, and, and particularly in the long run, when we're shipping to God knows where. Right? Yeah. yeah, Texas. Yeah, well, hopefully. But I mean, when we're talking savings, we're talking tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands. We're not talking millions. Mm -hmm. well, right. Oh, over so, time. But if it's oh, great, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The thing is, is that if you do a little bit now, and then you try and do something again in five years or ten years, it's only going to get more expensive. It's going to be yeah. even more expensive. Yeah. So I think you know everything escalates in cost. I mean, look at the highway. We used to be able to deal with the highway for. You know, five hundred thousand dollars a year now is close to a million. And at one point, it was even higher than it is now. Am I right in saying that? When you the were, highway, it oh, was, it's it's bounced up and down, but yeah. there's been some things done to save money. Yeah. I mean, the new facility on one thirteen, a, um, that cut our annual operating cost by almost a hundred thousand a year, and that's ten years old. So there's a million bucks. Yeah. So you, you gotta. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 hard to look. Sometimes you can hope yeah. it's tough to look down Second the road Yeah. Hindsight. Yeah. And I mean, so, you know, if we can get the EPA to pay for it, I think we're ahead of the game. I don't think that there's any reason we shouldn't right. shoot I mean, for that. Yeah. If it's all covered, you know. Again, <laughs> I just hope that I, I am just hoping that if we do get the grant and, the and we go forward with the project, that we won't be. I mean, obviously, someday it's going to cost a Three quarters of a million dollars, <clears throat> whether it's ten years from now or a hundred years from now, at some the point. Inflation rate going, it's yes. going. Um, but yeah. I just hope that when we get this all said and done, that the operating cost doesn't quadruple as well. That's yeah. my yeah. No, no, big I, concern. I'll be there until I drop, trying to keep it down. Fair enough. I'm hoping also it's easier to find employees if we if they can like work inside a building. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 right now we're on staff, we, we have one and a half people, and we used to have two and a half. And have a bathroom too, so they can wash your hands before lunch. Yeah, this is nothing other than a porta potty would be good. <laughs>
So you need us to make a motion approve, to just approve the application. Okay. Right, and there's a couple of pieces of paperwork that I need to come in and, and work with Keats on the first of the week. Um, Some of the forms are very, very. You know, if, if you want to know the numbers, there uh, form four two four and four two four A, which are federal forms, and they're these. Rolling things is the budget sheet, which I already have done. I think I sent that to you. I can't remember what I did. You know, which shows everything. It's just, it's, you know, these required forms. But I the meat and guts are in there. today for another reason. It is the most confusing website. Yeah. Yeah. I think of all of them. Yeah. I mean, the fact from? that these guys stuck with it and did all of it, I mean, Bravo. I think we'd be crazy not to say, of course, we'll apply for it, honestly. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the amount of hours that went into that grant is. I mean, we really, yeah. And it isn't over yet. Well, it's not over yet. You know, this is just part of the process, but it's like, if we can't get this, then... And, I mean, we need to be able to tell Sanborn Head as well, uh, fairly early on, what the realistic numbers are right. that they can work with to design. Yeah. And this grant will be granted in April? Yeah, I think yeah. April. So, it, you know, a pretty quick to turnaround to know if we've got this money to work with or if we don't. And I did submit a question to the yeah. EPA website today to ask them if it was a reimbursement program or if they send us a check. Most federal grants are reimbursements, but this one's unusual, so it might be like ARPA money. I don't know. Seriously? Wow. So yeah. I haven't heard back. Yeah. Considering oh. how many people are asking questions on their website, who knows yeah. when. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would make a motion uh, to approve the TSIC um, applying for this EPA grant. I think it's the town that is a Yeah, the town, oh, the the town, town, town has to. Right, right. okay, I'm sorry. The town <laughs> I move that we approve the town application for this EPA grant that the TSIC committee has brought forward. <laughs> Second. Um, do, we, do we need the amount in the, in the motion that we're applying for? Yeah. Uh, I think well, if we just say that we're put it in there. The total grant is. As I said before here, three million, uh, the, three million the, 159, the grant request is three million one hundred and fifty nine thousand seven hundred and eight dollars. So that would be part of the motion. You, uh, the only reason not to is that if any little thing changes, then it then right. you yeah. only made the motion. And I don't know that yeah. it, you need it. Yeah. Okay. And only we don't I need it. I mean, we seem to add the amounts and everything yeah. else we make motions about. So. Yeah. Because with the budget hearing coming, we don't have another meeting between now and, the and there. So, so that's why it's here. Like if there's, mm -hmm. yeah. Does this go? This doesn't go on the budget. No, 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 no. no, no. But we may not have a meeting next week. So. Oh, I see. If we get it when it comes, I see. Because of the fifteenth, right, right. right. To accept it right. And expect. Which is pretty simple. Uh, as far as discussion, I, I, I want to support this. Because, I mean, if anybody wants to give our town $3 million, that's yeah, a good no. thing. But I just don't see how we can, aff I, I don't see how this is going to be um, affordable in the future as far as the operating cost of this facility. I mean, I just, it, it, I just don't, it doesn't make sense to me, but I am, I, I, I guess I can't say no to uh, $3 million. I mean, I know it's a grant and there's my be certain strings attached or whatever, but I guess I, that's my discussion. I, I'm a little bit on the fence about this because I'm not supportive of this project because of the future operating cost. I think that it's going to further our tax burden, but it's not It's not that it's a bad thing. It's just I, and I, I, financially, I don't I think also think that <clears throat> we're like, like it was said, you know, it's hard to make this prediction estimate of cost before the design yeah. has actually yeah. been solidified because yeah. mm -hmm. they just you know so if you bring those concerns to the design process and say we're looking for more efficiency we're looking for you know a facility that can be rain shine hot cold open and you know we want it you know to be more I mean I can't imagine that going from container to container to this compressor to that you know that's not an efficient way to run things either. So, you know, there could be improvements in the design process that would actually make yeah. certain things more efficient. So, you know, I think it, like I said, it's just hard in this step of the process to try to 
say how much something's going to cost before you've designed it. But yeah. I mean, I, I understand exactly what you're saying, Emory, and I agree that future costs are a concern for the community and the town and how we're going to do it. Yeah. But I also have been sort of paying attention to what's happening to waste. Um, and we can't continue in the same manner we're continuing, we're doing, to dispose of our waste. We have to somehow fix that problem. Because we're $100,000 just to ship this stuff away. And, and that's where does it go for what? Yeah. You know, we get nothing back. And that number is going to just continue to go up, not only every year, but as soon as Rochester gets full, it's going to go somewhere further away. And Massachusetts and Rhode Island are already yeah. bringing it here, so you're on the other side of them bringing it. When I, I and I don't want to kick yeah. this saying. can down the road too far, but no, but my it's an issue. My thinking is, is a hundred thousand dollars is maybe one and a half full time employees at best. Maybe not even with benefits and stuff, but. Um, so if it takes an extra employee, well, there's our, there's your even if we save that hundred thousand dollars, there's a good chunk of that in mm -hmm. the equipment. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully we'll also be doing something for the environment. Yep. Well, there's something to be said for that too. And I we, do agree with that. Again, I don't think it's a, I don't disagree with right. recycling. I don't, that's, that's a good thing. It just it made it perfect sense. You yep. have well, to also think about be cautious. And if we can talk to them about like a composting facility, then that can keep 23% of the waste out of being hauled. Yep. And if we can keep glass crushing on site, we don't have to haul that anymore. I mean, there's major savings that can happen for the town too along the way. So, is there any other discussion? Roll call vote. Do you say yes? Barry, yes. Bitson, yes. Prentice, yes. Roberts, yes. Five, yes. Zero, no. One other thing I'd like to say is um, discussion's over. <laughs> no, 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 about, this is on well, another it issue, really another issue <laughs> about the same thing is signing the documents. Now, Keats has to enter them into government.gov. And whoever is the authorized person, you have to have a special authorized person to do. That's probably me. Like that. Well, but, but like that, the that's the thing. Oftentimes, and I, I've members. always said that the board should make sure that they make a vote to, to authorize, authorize yeah. the town yeah. administrator okay. Okay. to do that instead of having it be you or Kelly next week if she's here because Kelly won't be here after, you know. Well, and to plug the and I think you know, you So it, it keeps it more consistent with yeah. coming Adding into the office to the charter. So be yeah. 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 And as of now, you are the authorized I for the title, right. which yes, yeah. the yeah. AOR <laughs> authorized. So I'll make the, a motion to allow Keats to fill or to apply for the grant through government. Uh, or to make me the authorized to be the the authorized right. right. an right. 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 Yes. Okay. okay. So yeah. it puts in motion to make the TA second mayor the author. Uh, roll call vote. You say yes. Barry, yes. Goodson, yes. Prentice, yes. Roberts, yes. Five, yes. Zero, no. Prentice seconded? Yes. 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 Oh. And just thank um, you all okay. for all that work that went into it, because I know it was a oh. lot. Um, are we going to move on? Yeah. 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 Thank you for coming in tonight. And on to the ARPA funds discussion. You all have a spreadsheet in front of you. Mm -hmm. um, that summarizes how ARPA funding has been spent. It's a horizontal sheet. Okay. <laughs> it's a lot of sheets. <laughs> okay. So as you all probably recall, uh, we started with $322,130. $12,896 was spent on the uh, well at the transfer station, designs for the transfer station, and septic design, which has not been built. Um, Another $68,719 was spent on the rec department septic and bathrooms and shed and roof. And then $10,709 was spent um, during early time of COVID on, um, on the filters and masks and the air purifiers and all that stuff. That brought us, and then there's been two commitments made by the select board, $5,000 for the septic feasibility study, 
and 100,000 was voted on for the transfer station. And that leaves a remaining uh, amount in the ARPA grant of $124,806.80. Um, and so uh, that's the summary of what it, there is. And I have a proposal to use some of it. Um, I had a conversation two weeks ago with the representative of a local foundation about possibly funding all or part of the townhouse repairs. The fire escape at some point needs replacing. There's uh, wood rot on the north side of the building, uh, which is where rot tends to be because to stay shady. Uh, we had a, two quotes to do the work. One was metal fabricated. It was 45000 plus additional work to build the pad and, and probably additional carpentry that wasn't part of that. We also have a quote from Addison Mason for 20 Four thousand and change uh, to do a wood replacement. Um, the foundation representatives indicated that was not something they were likely to support. Um, so I went on the website, looking at the historic structures in New Hampshire and grant sources for that. And I had a back and forth via email with a representative of the Moose Plate <coughs> program. Uh, and one of the categories that. Uh, where Moose Plate funds goes to is historic preservation. Uh, and that individual gave me a, a very positive feeling that this is something they would fund. Um, and I was surprised at how quick that, you know, the information went back and forth. It's not like an, it's not like an email to the EPA. <laughs> so it was very promising. Uh, if you look at all of the grants they have ever awarded, the ones that they show on their website, none of them are over $10,000. Uh, so I probed a bit about that. They, re they recently lifted that cap, so they have issued some grants, 20000 or so, because they realize it costs more to build things than they did before. Anything over 10000 needs to go to the governor and the executive council, yeah. which is a little, it's a bit of a minefield sometimes, and it takes a little longer. But if you keep it at 10000 it's purely administrative, and the folks in the Moose Plate office do it themselves. Um, so... Uh, if the board is supportive, I will fill out the paperwork for the Moose Plate grant for whatever amount we think is worth applying for. I think it should be at least $10,000. Um, and then the rest of it, I would propose to use ARPA money uh, for the townhouse. The Addison Mason quote is 24630 If you add to that the window sash rehabs for Jean Chester, that was 3600 so the total is 28230 28230? Yep. So I was putting this together in my head and I was getting my dog license at the town clerk's office and I was I was handed a, a citizen petition that does the same thing but raises the money through taxation from the citizens. So I'm not sure what to do with that since I think I would rather get money from the state than to get it from the Tamworth taxpayers. Uh, the moose plate program, I have a moose plate. So I chose to pay more for my plate, knowing that that money was going to go to projects like this. So I would rather have people volunteer their money than to take it from the taxpayers. So I think we should request a grant of at least 10000 for the Moose Plate program. You have to sit around and wait for it. They won't award them until September. So the Addison Mason quote, you know, they're not going to hold the price that long, but it's not going to go crazy. I think it, would pro it could go up. I wouldn't be surprised if it did. Uh, but... I would propose that we pursue at least $10,000 in the Moose Plate program and set aside the remainder in ARPA, or just to be safe, set aside the whole 28230 in ARPA in case you don't get the grant from the Moose Plate. And come September, if we don't get the Moose Plate grant, then we use the ARPA money and, and replace the rot and the uh, fire escape on the town. Mm -hmm. Can I say one thing? Why was this a bad idea three weeks ago? Because you motioned for 45000 for the metal factory. Oh, did I? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Different so idea. if I would have done 28000 for the wood, we'd all gone for it. Um, Is that what you're saying? No, okay. I think the fact that somebody wants might give us 10000 and then we only have to Speaking pay eighteen, yeah. And even that eighteen won't come from the taxpayers. It'll come from ARPA. So there'll be no money needed from the taxpayers for the townhouse. Yeah. It'll all be... But I think state, everyone state is all the time from the art fund. You're going to be more. Yeah. That's right. But, but he's going to use the different, the more expensive model without any grant funding. And I don't think we had the Addison Mason quote at that time. I think we only I don't had think the we did either. 
the 45,000. I'm going to look back at that. <laughs> Emery, it was a great idea. We just wanted a little time to see if there were grants. That's all. Great idea. Right. Support it was, you 100%. Yeah. I remember saying that we were going to look I'm into sure grants. sure gets credit for it in a minute. <laughs> no. Although it's a different... What happens to the petition article then? I don't know. Well, it's it's 25 signatures, it goes on the it warrant. It goes on yeah. the warrant, and then it's... So they, if we get it twice? It, then. Or could we explain at town meeting that... Yeah, so you vote town meeting and they can five vote against it, it. Or table it. Okay. You know, we can... One, it Either could one. be five, five against it. And then you explain why, because why? the money because the money's money. already been come from somewhere else. And then nobody else will say, oh, That's I'd rather use check. tax money instead of ARPA money. I mean, you know. I'll make a motion at town meeting for you. <laughs> I think I, I think I want the extra taxes this year. It's all on. It's all on. I'm going to take that clip out and I'm going to only play that. Part. <laughs> <laughs> I think I end up in the paper <laughs> on a loop bed, just on a loop bed. Fair enough. 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 I'd make a motion we uh, apply for a $10,000 grant through the Moose Play program and fund the rest of the townhouse repairs with our funds. Is there a reason we don't want to apply for more? Because that has to go to the state. I, I'm not oh, sure. Okay, so it, they can do it in-house in in house house at 10000 So it's, it, the, the vibe I got was very positive. For the ten grand. Right. For up to okay. ten grand. So it's a slight gamble to go more. I don't think it's a huge gamble, but... It's a slight gamble. Sometimes you like things to just be a little easier. <laughs> about it, I don't know. Well, or, so or more attainable. Can I just make a point of order? There's a motion without a second. I second the motion. The, I second the motion. <laughs> now we can have discussion. For purposes of discussion. Yeah. Because I think maybe, it may be fifteen or twenty is a good idea. To apply for fifteen yeah. or twenty. Did they seem positive that it, or not positive, did they seem upbeat that if it went to the state it would probably be something that would be... What I was told is it, it takes a little longer was all I was told, but I do know the Executive Council has at times rejected uh, grants. Yeah. Not only giving them out, but even accepting them. When I used to work for the FA, I believe they rejected some grants that we were giving uh, to airports in New Hampshire because they didn't like the project. So the Executive Council is a bit of a wild card. I would think everybody's for a fire escape. I mean, who can argue right. about a fire escape? Hindsight. <laughs> 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 I'm not changing the ten thousand unless somebody else wants to. I mean, I'll. I, I just if it seems positive that we're going to get the ten thousand, it's better than not getting anything. And would it be the only grant that could be applied for for the project? Uh, not necessarily. Um, Later on in the Selectman's update, I'm going to talk about another um, grants workshop I was at today. There's another potential source for historic structures. Mm -hmm. um, that would also go toward, can you have multiple? That's a good question. I would assume you can because one's a state agency, one's federal. Okay. So they don't tend right. to yep. Okay. You can, and you can always apply to multiple grant yeah. grantors and for one project. Yeah. So they would don't. you make the motion contingent on... I think you make the motion the way it is, okay. and if it and if we get if we get more than ten thousand dollars in grants, we don't need to take it out of ARPA. We come okay. back and say, hey, we got it all, and yeah. we're, okay. the ARPA pool stays. So we'll be tying up ARPA money no matter what. It's a matter yep. of how much. So, yeah. mm -hmm. and then in September we'll know. Okay, do we immediately take that ARPA money and put it to something else, uh, or? Same. Have to use it by the end of the year. I think we have to have it obligated, yeah. obligated by twenty four. Oh, like twenty four. So this still yeah. time. Yeah. Okay. Um, wanna... Roll call vote. Just say yes. Fair yes. Quits and yes. Send us yes. Roberts yes. Five yes. <laughs> Great idea. Zero. Yes. I don't, you don't know how good, bad good I wanted work. to say no. Can I just clarify the motion? <laughs> yeah. uh, the motion was ten thousand for Moose Plate and use eighteen k from ARPA Prentice second. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Thank you for coming in. So looking at the rest of the ARPA, if I if I'm not mistaken, there was a potential if for a feasibility study maybe for a septic system.
So that was 15 grand? No, it's five. No, no five, five, and then five. Feasibility. And then I think it was 25,000. Was it 25? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for whatever the whatever comes. The design um, for the design. Is that what the select board voted on? No, no, no. Oh, no. no. It's just the estimate. It voted that we on were five, given. though. Yeah. Right. Cover the, okay. Yeah. So we're so, gonna do the feasibility study, see if it is feasible, and then if it is, we'll. And there pay. might be another. There 25. might be another. So we should hold twenty five in ARPA for that. So that still leaves well, a little over seventy thousand. Okay. Seventy one thousand five seventy six. Honestly, Keith, right now I just feel like let's just have. Uh, Engineering company want to take on the project. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So my point is, do we want to do we want to do something with that seventy one thousand right now? Because if I had to, I'd put it all to the transfer station. That's what I'm thinking. That um, would have a beneficial impact on the budget. Yeah. yeah. So the math is we've already. Uh, we've already we've already agreed to set aside five for the feasibility study. Mm -hmm. We talked about twenty five thousand more for septic design if there is a feasible plan. Plan, um, and then the seventy one thousand is what's left over after that. Nope, it's, no, we're still setting aside twenty eight two thirty for the townhouse in case we don't get the grant. Okay, so we've got one twenty four. One twenty four eight hundred. Eight oh six. Six. Yep. Minus um, minus twenty eight two thirty. Twenty eight two thirty. Minus twenty five mm -hmm. for minus twenty five potential. Gives you seventy one. That leaves you seventy one five seven six. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Though. Oh, okay. So seventy the seventy one already takes into into account the possibility of twenty five thousand. So if we decide not to do the twenty five thousand, that we'll still have twenty five thousand to deal with because we haven't agreed to spend yep. that twenty five thousand yet. Right. And yeah. I think there's a good chance. And the seventy-one thousand is the best way to take it out of Thank tax, you. Out of the Can you send me an electronic version of that? Okay. Because it just—it's uncomfortable to just leave money laying around when we have a we have a good place to spend it. Mm -hmm. But who knows what other ideas may come forward? Well, we're up against it budget budget-wise. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. I mean, now's now's a good time. Mm -hmm. And if something else came up that was really right superb or pressing, the twenty-five thousand is still in flux, yeah. yeah. and hopefully some extra from the twenty-eight thousand because right. maybe Offsetting some extra grants. grants will come. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess a round figure would be to move seventy thousand um, to the transfer station to defray the yeah. transfer station budget line. Mm -hmm. You going to make that as a motion? Yep. Yeah. We just did. <laughs> to apply 70000 in remaining ARPA funds to the transfer station. Second. Any discussion? Um, the reason I'm going to say no is because we have until the end of the year right. to right. decide. And if something else comes up that we the might be... The following year. Every oh, okay. Well, year. anyway, we have some time to decide. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so I would rather not dedicate the funds to it for now. Um, that's my thinking is maybe something's going to come up in the next year that we might say, geez, you know, it would be nice to have that money. Mm -hmm. Not that maybe we couldn't change it, but um, anyway, so with that being said, is there any other discussion? Can I just add a point to that? Yeah. Um, you could, in theory, add that 70 to ARPA funds next year, too. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and it would still make a difference. To it would next still make a difference to next year's mm -hmm. budget. And yeah. I will say that almost seems like I do have a little bit of reservation. I, even though I know it would be mm -hmm. offsetting the tax burden, and I like that, um, I do feel like it's so hard to know what is coming mm -hmm. down the line. And um, yeah, a year mm -hmm. and eight months is a year and eight months. Yep. So um, yeah, I'm a little on the fence about it. Yeah, that I, I don't. I mean, it's going to offset taxes. I don't disagree with doing it. I just yeah. think that we have some time. Something might come up. That's my point, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so with uh, yeah, I'll withdraw my motion. Can I do that if it's been seconded? 
I withdraw my second. Though it was Kelly. Or you can also vote. Oh, <laughs> I'll withdraw my second. Yeah. Um, yeah. We can all vote up. I don't have a problem with doing it. If, if yeah. I just think that we should maybe hold off for now, mm -hmm. see if anything comes up. I think that there's no reason. If, if it comes down to time, I don't care who's here on the board. If the transfer stations project is happening, there's no reason not to put the money there to offset taxes. Mm -hmm. Well, um, that's just saying it's like yeah for next year. Yeah, for next year. But if something that's another taxes. two twenty four next year or two seventy four whatever. It's another two seventy four. Yeah. That's yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. all right. Um, so are we just going to leave it there? Well, yeah. Did you do a roll call vote or did oh. you withdraw it? He withdrew it. I withdrew the motion. Okay, motion Perfect. withdrawn. Um. Moving on to the Conservation Commission with Nelson O'Brien. All right, thank you, Emory. Uh, the reason I asked Keith to put me on the agenda tonight was to bring you up to date on a long-running project and just let you know what's coming down the road and give you an opportunity to ask questions. And this concerns Christopher Alt's, Chris Alt's properties, uh, which are on the map that I think they have a yeah. copy. Uh, yeah, we got in our email. Yeah. Yeah. Got an yeah. email yeah. Uh, Chris has uh, a great number of yes. conservation easements, nine of them, in fact. Mm -hmm. And he would like to consolidate those into two. And he's been talking with the uh, Forest Society uh, about doing this because. Some of the easements are held by the town of Tamworth, some are held by the Forest Society, and uh, the, the entities are usually executory interest on the ones that are the others. So, uh, the proposal, which has been in the works now since 2018, uh, and was delayed by a pandemic, a uh, change in personnel, maternity leave, and I forgot what else. But in any event, uh, it's getting towards the point where th things are beginning to happen. And the idea at first was, from the group was that we would just redo the uh, easements. Well, Tom Maslin, who is the attorney for the Forest Society, suggests that the uh, town assigned its uh, interest in the uh, conservation easements which are owned by the town to the Forest Society before the work of consolidating them uh, is done. Now, the Attorney General's office has uh, signed off on the consolidation, and what happens in this case is that whatever the most stringent uh, conservation easement, that is the one that will then become for the entire uh, group. Mm -hmm. And what's listed here, uh, there are sev only seven here because um, L in the map, which is the um, lot with the house on it, will be separate because he wants that one separate. Because once this is done, it will be uh, no subdivision. So, um, what will happen next is that you, the, con the, the board here, will get a document to say, we will assign our interest in these conservation easements to the Forest Society. Now you might say, all right, why do we want to do that? Uh, the, actually, the Conservation Commission is very excited that we would do this <laughs> <laughs> because, one, uh, it reduces the amount of paperwork uh, because for each conservation easement we have to do an uh, annual report. Mm -hmm. um, also, that means that the Forest Society will then be in a position of enforcing any uh, infractions on the Easements, and so that takes something off of you know potentially. I don't think there's a problem here, but there isn't actually. I shouldn't have even assumed that it is. Uh, so 
we, the Conservation Commission, highly recommend to go ahead with this. And then once the um, assignments are made and those documents are filed, then uh, they will go ahead and consolidate the easements, at which point we don't really have to do anything except we'll, be, we'll have executory interest in it. There will be a signature required for that. Mm -hmm. I hope that makes sense. Mm -hmm. it does. So much so, tidier. Yes. We don't have to take any action tonight, then we wait for the... No, you yeah. don't have to take any action tonight. Just I just wanted you to yeah. be aware of what's yeah. coming up yeah. uh, and ask questions if you want, because it does get to be a little complicated. Mm -hmm. And if you looked at the um, uh, document that I sent, that's one that came from the Forest Society. Uh, it's strictly just an assignment. And as far as costs are concerned, uh, the town will bear no cost, with one exception, and that is that when the final documents come, they're legal documents, I personally would not sign them without the town's attorney looking at them. Um, so Christine Fillmore will be asked to look at them before, and that expense will come out of the uh, uh, Conservation Commission's uh, funds. Thank you, Nelson, so for explaining that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so, do you need support from the... Not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Not yet. Okay. Unless you have a question. Uh, it's just, I just wanted to bring you for information. I didn't want to come here with five sets of assignments okay, and for you to <laughs> yeah. sign okay. and, and you look at them and say, what's this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank All right. You. Well, thank you very much for yeah. letting me come. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for being here. Thanks. Yeah, have a good night. Good night. Um, on to the subject feasibility study RFP. So um, basically the group um, that's working on that, um, our thought was that the RFP that we had sent out before involved the, old, the current septic system a little bit too much and had a little bit too strict perimeters made by a group that isn't necessarily in the field of designing septic. So we revised it. Um, we really took the whole other septic out because it really doesn't involve the other septic much. They don't have to know and understand how it works or whatever. They just have to see if there could be one on this side of the river is what we're asking. Um, and so basically the RFP is just really simplified and just saying, can you tell us if a, if a septic on, of this size would work on this side of the river? When you say this side of the river, you mean the west side? Bridge. The this bridge. Way. Oh, the bridge. This way. Oh, it's this right way. now it crosses okay. the river and goes uphill and <laughs> it's kind of a crazy septic system as it is. <laughs> but um, just to see if it's feasible because if they can't find a place that we can put it, then there's no sense in us mm -hmm. going forward. The other RFP, though, I think was just too complicated to have the engineers say, oh, yeah, I want to sign up for that complicated problem, <laughs> you know? <laughs> The one question I had about it was that um, I read it a couple of times, and maybe I was just not seeing it in that list of bulleted items, mm -hmm. but I was expecting it to say pretty clearly um, that that a site would be identified, too, because it talks about, like, it seemed like what was included in it was assessing what the use would be and what, a, what size system there would need to be to accommodate use on this side of the river, there was one. Was yeah, there I one that, that said? There was one it, there, the intention is that they search find for out. a site. Yeah, for the site work. I did not see that. Yeah. That John sent me today. It was huh. in there. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that there I is. I think a that's going to be one of the hardest. Yeah, because <laughs> I was look. That's why I was yeah. looking for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh, What's okay. the best way to see that it gets out to people who might be interested, or because I don't. There's not like. Well, you know, a septic designer association, you can just send it there and 100 people get it. So I guess our, like, biggest, like, maybe it is something that the group needs to revise on is that it really did seem like ATD was going to show interest in this. They have familiarity with mm -hmm. the project, and um, though we don't know if that's why they didn't put mm -hmm. a bid in, we're just wondering if... Um, if it was just too complicated, if they were just like, that sounds like a mess. I don't so you guys know. haven't reached out to them to ask why they... We have reached out to them. Um, they gave us an idea that it was how many perimeters there were, so we also mm -hmm. numbed those down too. 
we don't want to tell people how much something's going to cost by the end of the design. You know, we just decided, like, just tell us if we can do it. Yeah. And then tell us what the cost will be instead of us being like, if you can do it within this budget, yeah, yeah. then we'll talk to you. Yeah. Um, I just think it was too narrow for them. So I think we'll just put it out there pretty broad and see what comes back. Really, the ask is a feasibility study to see where, how big, and who would come off of the existing system, so the capacity that would be gained. So we go in the newspaper or what? Well, my impression was we voted before. It was in the newspaper on the exchange, and and we sent it out to the engineers that had gone towards the transfer station, right? Isn't that what we did for the last There time? was a, a small number that I found on there. Yeah, yeah, they're right. There was, a, and I, I think that number could be broader. Yeah, I mean, I just took, you know... 15 minutes and found a handful of septic designers on. Yeah. How much would it add to the paper cost? Uh, well, it's just like, I guess if you post it for a week, it's $240. Mm -hmm. How many are you going to reach with that paper? Yeah. Right. I what about the engine? Wasn't, wasn't yeah, there the, uh, <clears throat> you know, didn't you find Sanborn had um, through like some There's engineering? A New Hampshire Business Journal, I think it was. Is that what it was? And Willie sent well, there out was over a 200 list. letters. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he went really, yeah. really I think big. it was actually 65. Okay. But it went to engineers. Um, right. And these companies. are, this is a subset. I'm not going to name any names, but I'd like to make sure we don't <coughs> send it to the uh, firm that engineered the first system. Okay. Well... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they'd respond anyway. But. Maybe it's uh, but not public. So, <laughs> so can your group? Um, can your group send Research out direct? Send out direct mailings. Now, I know with uh, certain size systems, it goes from being just a septic designer to being an engineer. Mm. So I'm assuming that this size system would be an engineer. Yeah, because it's mm. one of the larger yeah. sizes. So it's we still are systems. asking for them to stay underneath the municipal. The municipal size system, so it has to be nineteen thousand or less, nineteen thousand gallons, gallons, gallons per day. But even so, there must be. Uh, there's, a, there's a list uh, of designers on the New Hampshire DES subsurface website. Oh yeah. Um, that would I know there's sense. a list of installers. So I'm that would make sense. Almost positive there's a list of designers. Um, and I'm happy to. I'm not sure if more. it breaks down like. Because like a regular septic designer, I don't believe is allowed to do a system over a certain size. Mm -hmm. um, My group hadn't really considered that maybe we didn't reach out to like enough engineers. We thought that it was a shortcoming on the RFP. That so that's what we really, yeah. What, what was we that? didn't we didn't end up using it, but I was saying that uh, David Clef, when when the system yeah. initially failed, and we were. Um, Looking at repairing it, replacing those fields. Well, then it might be it might be worth um, so asking Dave Clough if I'm right in saying that because I always thought for some reason that yeah. there was uh, a side like a regular septic designer could do up to a certain size, and then after that it had to be an engineer. Yeah, um, we surprised. But if if it's just any designer, I mean, I could come up with a list of probably twenty names mm -hmm. um, with a throughout the state of designers. Mm -hmm. um, this project will probably involve, you know, pump station and yeah. you know, piping yeah. and whatnot. A little bit I don't more think more it's really a, too no, complicated of a septic design for any designer, but I think for some reason a certain size system and you know, has to be yeah. an engineer versus just a regular. Right. Because anybody can go be a septic designer just from going and taking a test. The test, yeah. At a con in Concord. The hard test. It is a pain. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was going to say. You mentioned it is. people coming off the system from the side of the river, but it's a gravity system. So the pipes all slope this Down way. to a tank that Down pumps tank. up. And then it gets the pumped field. uphill. Well, then it gets pumped. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not like you could run it in reverse and go out that way. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Very easy. Not saying to like you'd tie to, the other you'd line. You have to have run a new line. You'd have right, to go you'd have from to run a pump new station that way. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, you would you, so yeah, and I don't, I'm not yeah. a such a okay. designer. So, well, how do we answer the question of what size system bumps us into the engineer model? We and got, I, I could be okay. um, <laughs> incorrect in saying that, but it might be worth a worth an ask. Yeah. And if any designer can do it, then I think that there's a. I'm almost positive that on the New Hampshire. Uh, DES yeah. website, yeah. there's a list of designers mm -hmm. in New Hampshire, and you could just, yeah. I don't know if it gives their email, I'm assuming it does because they're part of the e-permitting mm -hmm. system, mm -hmm. then you could just send out an email to all 
yeah, and, see and if designers they could, and right. see who is a lot. Or I know a lot of them RFP are very the size busy right now. is part of it. Maybe only the people that could mm -hmm. do it would. Right. If yeah. they know that they don't have the, the right. I'd be happy to ask um, that. Or well, who's taking care of it? The um, the committee. The committee. It's just the committee. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I would ask Dave Clough if, if I would have the committee. Yeah. Just ask Dave Clough. Um, if if anybody could do or it. Or Paul King, he he designed septics. Um, okay. I didn't know that he did septics either. I didn't either till I looked for a septic designers near Tamworth, New Hampshire, and his name popped up. I didn't know it was. Oh yeah, all right. So I'll just ask them if anybody yeah. can do it, and then we'll have a bigger pool of who we can. Yeah, and then anybody... directly reach out to people. Right. And, like. I, I think that yeah. people are so busy right now that if you're not reaching out to them, they're not they don't need to look. Yeah. I don't think they need to look at ads in the paper right now. No. Um, well, we had started the conversation with H E B, which is why we were surprised that they didn't apply for it. And so I guess when we need some recommendations yeah. we So do we need to do we need to um reapprove the uh, revised RFP? I think so because it's new. Yeah. yeah. But before we do but, that, I do have a suggestion. Yeah. I think it would be appropriate to ask our existing sewer commission to look at the RFP and just give us their opinion, because mm -hmm. just I think that's at least being polite. Sure. Uh, okay. They haven't seen it. I just saw that email that you had sent about that to like this afternoon. Yeah. I um, thought of this a couple hours ago. Yeah. We should send it to. So I sent it to Hillary. Hillary is aware of it. Oh, good. You sent yeah. an actual copy to her. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So if we could hold off um, mm -hmm. issuing it and okay. gather this data, and maybe you know in a week or so. Yeah, I'll. Uh, yeah. I have a okay. Answer. So we don't need a motion for anything. Not yet. Um, Can I just ask a process question? Yes. Why is the select board even approving it? Why isn't it just the sewer commission? Because uh, this is a different committee, and, and it's use of our oh. Oh. oh, and it's not the sewer commission. It's not the sewer commission. It's, it's a, that. It's a, this is like separate. It's, okay. a, it's a different committee that. And it's mostly the use of the ARPA money, I think, that triggers our yeah. oversight. Yeah. Right. So. Um, and at some point, you know, it might be something like the TSIC where you want a group of people working. At, but I think we have to know if it's feasible first. That's the first step. Yeah. Yep. Moving on to the budget and warrant. Near final draft. Near final draft. Near final draft. I spent a fair amount of time on the phone with um, Michelle Clark, who is just a really helpful, lovely person. She is our assigned Department of Revenue person. Um, and there's um, definitely some <coughs> edits that are going to come. What happens is, is that this first draft got entered of the warrant and the budget into the DRA portal. She reads through it and makes comments on each article. Wow. I have to go in and see what her comments are and make adjustments. And she said they're all very minor and it looks pretty good. Um, the biggest change will be, um, I wasn't sure, and <coughs> I've been talking with our attorney and with DRA, and it was taking a lot <coughs> back and forth, and it's been a conversation that's been going on for quite a while, about what, what do you do with the, the TSIC um, pre-approved money that was approved last year. So there's this three-year thing. And so... What happens is, and this makes so much sense, but it took a long time for everybody to agree that this is the way to do it, is that money was now it was approved for a capital project. That now goes to the general operating budget and gets approved in that line because of the vote in the town warrant last year. So 274 less 100000 for the ARPA money. I think that's all we have for now. Yeah. Um, and then 50000 that was pre-approved last year that comes out of the unassigned fund balance. And so whatever that number, so that's 150 so it's um, 124 I believe, will go into the budget um, as part of the general operating budget. And that will be raised from taxation. Um, so that was, it sounds very simple when I say it. That took about two days worth of discussion. <laughs> no, and figuring it out. It's like, it, you, know, you, know, you know, I follow the, the lawyer and the DRA. <laughs> so that's the biggest change in this past week, is that that warrant article is now out of the this document. The other piece that I um, sent you a sort of explanatory email on is the whole issue of the um, contingency. Contingency. I was going to say consignment. I was like, no, that's not what I mean. Contingency. So, um, so the the way to do this. Um, 
with uh, DRA and legal you know, approval and blessing is um, we can have a 1% contingency, which would be about $36,000 It's in the budget. And then what you do and what many, most towns do is you set up what's called an expendable fund, an expendable trust fund. And that fund has to have a purpose. It can't just be totally broad, but it can be fairly broad. So you could set up a fund. And, and what I'm suggesting is actually um, less money than the $200,000 contingency, just to be clear. This is not additional dollars. This is to address like your concern about having enough money for emergencies. Mm -hmm. And this is the way to do it that is the DRA would approve of and follows the law. So, so you set up three funds. Um, any amount can go into them. I have put in this document, and it's for you to, you know, be discussed at the budget hearing and to bless, but you would have a fund for uh, town buildings, a fund for town infrastructure, and a fund for town equipment. And that would cover almost everything that the contingency would have covered, and you don't have the $200,000 contingency. So instead of 200000 to be um, put into the budget from the fund balance, you would have 150 plus 36, 186, you'd have 186,000 to come from the unsigned fund balance. Again, so this is sort of um, neutral in terms of um, taxation dollars. It's all unsigned fund balance. Um, and then what happens? Let's say you spend 20,000 fixing something. Let's say you have the fire escape collapses and we have to fix it with emergency money because you didn't get any grants and whatever. I'm just yeah. making up numbers. So. You'd spend, take the 20 out of the expendable trust fund for town buildings, and in the next budget in 2024, you would replenish that money. So you only would, mm -hmm. there's only a one time, unless you spend it all in one year. So you wouldn't, um, you wouldn't every year so be voting that 200. You'd only vote back in exactly what, what you, you spent. spent. The only um, hmm. difference would be that that money wouldn't go into the on designated fund balance. So Correct. you could use less stay. money out of that every yes. year. So it would be the same, Initially, realistically. Initially, this first year, we would have to see those 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 funds, right? Yep. Let's say you spend 5000 for it, one, 3000 from another, and 20000 from another. Then you would only repay that It would be the amount. same. It's the same. I mean, in the end. It, yeah, except no. the... Yeah. Yeah. Because you do lo you yeah. use less money out of the... you. You use you less, have, but less goes back in. Yes. Correct. In the future, it would be the same. It might take a, a year to, yeah. or two to, to yeah. even yeah. it out. But yeah. this, is, this is legal. That's, <laughs> that's, it that's has a good benefit thing. Which is a legal. plus. <laughs> yeah. 200000 wasn't. Apparently not. Yeah. I was just curious why. Why did why was it why did we do it in the first place? Yeah. And then how many, many years have maybe we been doing it? Maybe this model wasn't people weren't aware of. Like, it. was it a safe way to do it? In like, did COVID come along? So we we're like, oh, we got to do this two hundred thousand dollar contingency, or was this the way that it was done ten years ago and it was just never changed? Yeah, and, and or I'm afraid I don't have that answer yeah. for you. That was my we biggest. We could glance at the old town reports, it's but yeah. but if this is the way that uh, our lawyers advising us to and other, handle and the way it. other towns several towns I've spoken with do okay um, it's kind of like the glitch with the health insurance well it was just done that way for a while and nobody caught it then yeah, well then I guess yeah. I mean yeah and it's not gonna there's no negative impact with this no. unless we find out next year that there is a negative impact but <laughs> I, I I don't see I mean, it leaves you because the money. There's still money there to be used. There's the thirty-six thousand for sort of the little operational things that might happen, or like even some a printer breaks and I need to get a yeah. printer that's more than the budget. Or the heating system fails in the town. That would come out of the expendable. Yeah. yeah. So you have a small contingency, yeah. and then you have these three funds. Um, and and I think I've the three cover pretty much the broad range. You know, mm -hmm. infrastructure, equipment. So if an axle breaks, there's money in the equipment line, you know, so, whatever. So you had, in your example, you had 50000 in each yep. of the three, yep. which seemed like a, a good number. Um, do we have to approve that so you can well put it in the budget um, so it can be reviewed on... I mean, basically, the budget here, so the budget, these are, this is the proposed warrant and the proposed budget, right? Oh, you okay, have so that's what I 
we're going to go through that on next Thursday. Yeah. And hopefully you've all read this with a fine tooth comb and sent me questions or anything that concerns you before then. So then, <laughs> okay, hint, hint, let's do that. And then, um, and then you will vote on every single article mm -hmm. in here. Where Emery's going to be gone, is there any way to get how he would have voted on these articles? No. I don't. Like in the book. You can't have a proxy. <laughs> I don't know. But it's I mean, if, you, I can if you feel strongly, lawyer, I, if you feel strongly about it, you can send me notes, and I'll. Well, I was just put thinking, my Emery hat like, on and share your. I mean, if you want, if you, have, that, yeah. if, if you have, if you have thoughts that you want shared. Yeah, you could read uh, we it can and do that. vote on it, maybe okay. or something. Can or, we zoom um, I don't know if he can vote. I don't know if he can vote, but he could. Yeah. But if you have Express things opinions. you want on the record, we could share your. Notes. The only thing um, that we didn't do this year that we did last year um, was the money that we raised from like registrations and stuff like that. We went through that. Uh, I can't. I'm drawing a blank on what that's called. Oh, the, the non-tax dollars, revenue sources? Revenue yeah. sources. Yeah. Um, last year we went through that like line for line uh -huh. and estimated what we thought we'd have. Oh, okay. I um, I mean, I know it's a little bit Well, so late now, but I, I was trying to... So there was stuff that we, like, throughout the budget this year, and I should have paid more attention last year, that's my fault, but I'm learning. Um, there was, I was like, I know we went through something line for line, and like, we would say like, okay, let's change this line from... Fifteen hundred dollars to seventeen hundred and fifty dollars because that's what it's it's gone up a little bit each mm -hmm. year, um, um, and that was what we do that. The the way that um, I was taught to to do the revenues, mm -hmm. and again, it's you know was um, to take a very conservative position on the revenue, like take last year, take the last two years of revenues, mm -hmm. and then say, let's say some item is two hundred fifty thousand. Then I would put in something like two hundred or two twenty five. And maybe the reason we did it this way last year is because we didn't have a town administrator. Oh, well that may be. Maybe that's why we did it. Because you were doing the work the that Keats is doing now, you well, mean? I right. Well, say me, but Becky and Melanie. Becky and Melanie, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but maybe that's why we did it at the meeting versus that may be you I, and doing it. I you know, know, and I think each my what I one thing I'm learning over time, I'm in a list serve with many town administrators is that each town has its culture and custom, mm -hmm. and um, so it may be that that's the way it was done. Well, I've only been here for a year, so I don't know. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> or, um, this your second year? This, well, two. This you, is... This, this year and year two. This is, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> year, um, everybody so, else is in their first year. <laughs> so, you know, so based on the way I'm being taught, I may be bringing in some changes. Like I was taught by Kathy Graham, who was the town administrator for Sandwich for 19 years, about these expendable trust funds, mm -hmm. you know, so that's like new to this town's way of doing things. I don't know if the town administrator putting conservative numbers in the revenue line is a new way of doing it or not. Um, okay. Apparently it is. <laughs> well, I was trying to, I I knew that there was something we went through last year, yeah. line for line, and like we would Discuss vote, it. like there'd be a motion to change something. Oh. <clears throat> Or maybe I think that's at the budget here. Okay. I think that that's Again, I'm kind of and and oh, this. by the way, so I uh, asked um, Ed. I, th I think you're right that you guys had to do, or Becky and Mel had to do the work because there wasn't a Keats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if and I could just say, I am either, so impressed right? with what they carried January? forward. Yeah. yeah. That was well, a huge amount either. of work. Well, but no, town. They did it. They went on and and didn't. They did. They did amazing. Bravo to them. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, it was a lot for a select board to take on. Oh, my God. A select board member. Um, yeah. And they did it. And it passed the, I mean, all, you know, what you're dealing with, DRA. Yeah, yeah. You know, I remember them dealing with that at the coming it's in. A lot. It is a lot. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, I just them. wanted to urge all of you. So I asked Ed the date of last year's budget hearing that is recorded. It, it was February 3rd, uh, 2022. Just to get us, like, I'm going to watch it. Everybody should, you know, I see how it went, you know, just to get a sense of the order of events. And I mean, you two were there, but. Presumably. Yeah, I'm probably not going to watch them because. Yeah, I, I could imagine you, you'd yeah. been to them. Yeah, <laughs> you don't need to. But the others <laughs> of us. Yep. And you won't be there. <laughs> right, you won't be there. So you might not have to watch them this year. Um, that was the third, you said? You could, like, watch yeah, one yeah. every day on vacation. Oh, yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. <laughs> I can't fell asleep. 
so we're gonna move on. Um, are we done with the budget discussion? Uh, no. Yeah, I think okay. that was it. I, so. I want to talk. I want to cover. Can, I, and I just urge you to just go through it with a fine tooth comb. On to the Energy Commission appointments. Um, we have the three up at the top. Yeah, you've got um, oh. Ellen Farnham, yeah. Gabrielle Watson, and Te uh, Ted, Morgan. Ted Morgan. Um, I make a motion to appoint Ellen Farnham, Gabrielle Watson, and Ted Morgan to the Energy Commission. Second. Roll call vote. Do you say yes? Very yes. 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 Roberts, yes. Five yes, zero no. Um, moving on to administration. Oh, um, so uh, I wanted to add to the agenda to close the transfer station on Saturday due to the uh, wind chills um, and the weather. And I know we do live in New Hampshire. We get cold weather. It's been an abnormally warm year. Um, but if it were actual temps on Saturday, it would be one thing, but we were supposed to have some really, really cold wind. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so it's negative 20, but plus the wind chill. I heard yeah. negative, negative 45 with the wind. Oh, yeah, really? It's, it's yeah. a safety yeah. issue. With the wind chill. Yeah. 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 With the wind so, chill. in the house Saturday morning. Yeah. Um, yeah. I hope they cancel the farmer's market. I mean, they I just moved it to Sunday. Oh, good. Phew. Yeah. Bob so, said he doesn't sell for I, I don't think a lot of people, I'm hoping I'm not <laughs> speaking for everybody. I imagine a lot of people aren't going to go to the transfer station if it's negative temperatures with a lot of wind. Um, I hope Glenn doesn't get too mad at me for saying this, but I think that it might be a good idea. To, I, I, I think I'm agree. probably going to be doing something work-wise on Saturday because that's my choice and I have the choice to do that, but I don't think you should have to be out mm -hmm. in the weather well, And Saturday. they don't really have, you know, they don't have a, a good place to get into. To, um, yeah. Anyway, somebody's I, do you want always to make... out in the elements. There. I think we just so uh, I make a motion to close down the transfer station on Saturday. What's the date on Saturday? Uh, today is the second. fourth. Fourth. On Saturday, the fourth, um, due to the wind chill. Second. And Question. we should let Glenn know. Do the employees still get paid? Well, once. Or done. should they? What? Should, should they, they still pay the employees? I think if we're telling them they can't go to work, yes, they should still yeah. get paid. You want to notify the public? Yep. On the oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'll be on yeah. the website. I mean, we have mm -hmm. to approve we'll put it, it first. So, um, we haven't I haven't finished yet. my vote. Nobody seconded? Yeah. No, no, I it. seconded. Kelly okay. seconded. We so, just we should uh, put it on the website, exchange. And, yeah. Put um, some posters up and at the post office, maybe. Yeah, I'm hoping, like yeah, we'll let there. everybody know every we can. And yeah. Or just stick one on the front door of this building. Probably yeah. more people see that than the post office. Well, I, don't know. Yeah, I just don't think you... Do I'll do both. Yeah. I don't think we should we tell our employees they have to be outside yeah. all day on Saturday. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Okay. Roll call vote. Did you say yes? Very yes. Good and yes. I just yes. Roberts yes, five yes, zero no. <clears throat> um... Administrator report. Um, our current cap balance is four million two hundred fifty thousand and thirty-eight dollars. I have been working on the budget a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be my uh, main thing. Also, um, working with Rick and giant kudos to Rick. He's just great to work with, and he helped rearrange this whole room. Um, we're almost done. We need the computers hooked up. Um, and thanks to all the committees who. And thanks to all the committees who went through, uh, in particular, the Conservation Commission, like, just got rid of a lot of stuff. Um, Annie seems very happy over here, and Elaine is away, but she um, is well looking forward to, I think, having a more focused place to work, um, which is great. And um, I feel like there was one other thing I wanted to share, and it's slipping my mind at the moment. Do you want to fold the interest waiver request into your report since you're going to tell us about it anyway and we skipped it on the agenda from oh. the resource? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, sure. Right. Yes, and I was going to bring it up. So it got added. Oh. Yeah, no, it was and it, it was, was added to the signature file, but I can explain what it is. File. So basically, yeah. um, there was a, a, a clerical error made in assessing um, for Eversource, and because this uh, meeting got canceled on the 12th, that's when it was supposed to be signed, and taxes are due on the 17th. The next meeting was until the 19th. 
Eversource is requesting that we waive the interest. It seems reasonable to me. Um, so um, that's what that form is. We want to make that motion now? Or? <laughs> yeah. I'm making a motion. I, I'd like them to waive my interest when my payment's a little bit late. <laughs> 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 I make a motion we um, waive uh, Eversource's interest that occurred because we canceled our January 12th meeting. Um, we need a second before we discuss. So, second before we discuss. Second. <laughs> so, why are we waiving their interest? They asked because, us because we canceled the meeting. Because of the right. bad we'll weather. We, the, the, the forms would have been signed, they would have paid the bill. And they would have no interest, but the meeting was canceled. Do we know how much it is? I think it's in the range of four hundred dollars, but I'm not exactly sure. Oh, it's my monthly electric bill right there. Did you want to? <laughs> is this P S N H? Yeah. Yeah. Ever source. Ever source. Same thing. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think the confusion was for the abatement. They would have gotten if the supplemental bill was sent, they would have had an extra thirty days, which is what I believe Rod, the assessor, was explaining to them. I don't know if they took it because two of the parcels were not abated. They were done correctly and due January 17th. Two of them weren't, had the state ed tax on it, which they shouldn't have, so we did abatements for that. And um, I don't know if they spoke with Rod. They mentioned the he, so I was assuming it was Rod. Um, had to explain to them that they would have an additional time to pay for those two that were abated. Because right now you're talking... 300 and something dollars worth of interest. Mm -hmm. So those were due January 17th. Those had no abatement involved. So you I don't just, think that we should do a full, full waiver? I don't think so. I, I think and that they're, those due dates were due when they were. I don't know. For half of it. I don't know the conversation Rod had with them, but the two that were the bigger parcels that have never, that have been billed that way for years were not involved in the abatement process. So. Sounds like we need more clarification before we... I think so. Well, I, I would say that. I would or, say... Or just a difference of opinion on, you know, to me it seems like they were planning on paying them all as a group, and they were going to settle that, and because the meeting got canceled, it got delayed. But it, but what but what's being said is that they could have paid... Yes, they could have, but... Part of their bill... But they were going to write one check for all of it. Well, oh, that's, yeah, that's not... But okay. whether they were or not, I just think we need a little more clarification if Rod did, in fact, say whatever he said to whomever he said it to in a manner that sounded like that, maybe. But this isn't new to them. They've been paying these those two parcels that weren't, didn't, weren't involved in the abatement for years. So it's okay. not new. The due date was not new yeah. to them and the timing. And I'm sure they've gone through different abatement processes in other towns and have probably paid the bills that were due when they were due. And the abatement process does allow for an extended period of time because you send a new supplemental bill and you have to give them a new 30 days from the date of that new bill. Mm -hmm. so, so then there wouldn't have been interest so on just, that. Either. So we can so show we want to table this? Yeah. 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 I'm disinclined. Thank if you. it's about them writing two checks versus Thanks, yeah. one, I'm disinclined to give I just them got their a I just got their anything. check tonight and they paid everything but the interest. So that's your decision later, but they paid okay. everything but the interest. Yeah. And I mean, what I'm saying, though, is that if, it, if, they, if they didn't pay what they could have paid, because they wanted to write it on one check. That seems like a them. I'm not. I don't. I'm not inclined to give them a couple hundred dollars because they didn't want to write two checks. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I heard you say. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Those, the other two that are the ones that are involving this interest you're speaking of were not involved in the abatement process and were due January 7th. Okay. I would like to know what the number is for the part that was part of the abatement process that couldn't happen because we canceled the meeting. So that's the number that. I, I would be more inclined if they couldn't if they couldn't go through a process. Well, they, they, but Kim is saying they had an extension for Regardless of those. that abatement process, the two they're talking about that they want waivers on were not involved in the abatement process, so it doesn't matter so whether we oh, postpone the, the abatement. Okay. So, do, does Emily have a breakout of these numbers? They're right I can here. Give they're, you. They're on one. The, So, so they're asking. One bill is one hundred and four thousand dollars. They want an abatement for the three hundred and nineteen dollars worth of interest on that. That was due January seventeenth. It was not involved in the abatement process. Oh. One of the other bills was seven seventy eight hundred or something, and had twenty five dollars or something. Twenty three ninety five. Thank you. Yep. 
in interest. Three hundred nineteen thirty-five. $1.59 and $1.24. The one with the $1 are the abatement process. Right. So, right. so we did not, I did not collect interest on those like because I have that ability yeah. to waive, which I explained to the woman when she called. So I did not have the ability to waive the bigger ones. So the bigger numbers are not part of the abatement process. And could have been paid. They could have been paid. I'm disinclined to give that waiver for the interest. We can give the $2.39. Well, that I, that I already forego. That's oh, already okay, that's great. That's I'm, di I'm yeah. disinclined to. Um, so let's table it, or are we? Gonna no, I think that we just say out. we just say no. Who have made that? Right. Just withdraw. It. Okay. Well, well, no, we we should. No, oh, we, we should just, vote on. I think okay. we need we to vote, vote no so that they know yeah. that we voted. No. Much of my roll call vote. Who, who seconded? Oh, sorry. It? Who? I might have. Kelly did. You and I did. Right. Oh, that's what happened. Because we started talking about it, we were trying to shove a second at it because we were talking about it. Roll call vote. Do you say no? Bear no. That's a no. Prentice no. Roberts no. Finally a no vote. I haven't had that happen in two years. <laughs> Excellent. Good. And it was about money. I know. Yeah, fair good. enough. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I'm short. <clears throat> oh yeah. Well. <laughs> sorry. 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 Um. So. On to the signature file. Yeah. <clears throat> I make a motion to approve the select board meeting minutes for January 26, 2023. Second. Roll call vote. You say yes? Very yes. Good and yes. Apprentice yes. Roberts yes. Five yes, zero no. Uh, yeah, okay. I make a motion to approve the non public meeting minutes under RSA 91 A colon 32 A. Second. Roll call vote. Is there a date on that for the same day? Same uh, day. January 26, okay. 2023. Uh, abstain. Uh, very yes. Good and yes. Apprentice yes. Roberts yes. Four yes, one abstention. I make a motion. Oh, we already did that. Um, we already did that. I make a motion to approve the payroll in the amount of forty-six thousand fifty-five dollars and thirty-seven cents. Second. Roll call vote. Did you say yes? Very yes. Fifteen yes. Prentice yes. Roberts yes. I make a motion to approve the account payable in the amount of one hundred and eight thousand forty dollars and zero cents. Second. Roll call vote. Did you say yes? Very yes. Fifteen yes. Prentice yes. Roberts yes. On to the select board update with Richard. Uh, last week, I had that conversation that I recounted with, uh, regard, with the Moose Plate office. Uh, on Monday, we had a brief conversation, we being Keats and I and Willie, with Sanborn Head about getting early, early cost estimates for the EPA grant. So that happened on Monday. On Tuesday, we had a TSIC meeting and went through the EPA grant, and we probably did some other stuff that I can't remember, and maybe you'll remember, because I don't. Uh, and the one new thing is, uh, today there was a grants workshop that was hosted by uh, rep the, our two federal representatives, and they had a number of uh, federal agencies explaining their grant programs, and there's a lot more of them than I thought. Hmm. Uh, some, I mean, I really want to look into it further. Some of them provide grants for home repair, for people that don't have enough money to fix their homes. And I, I had no idea these things existed. Yeah. Uh, the thing that was... The real th reason I was there is to learn more about the Northern Border Regional Commission. Remember last year, Carroll County did, was not eligible for their grants, except in uh, pockets of, uh, distressed pockets within the county. Um, each year they reassess um, all the county's eligibility. Carroll County has now switched. They're now in transition, transition in the wrong direction into um, being in more distress. Mm -hmm. So that means all Carroll County municipalities are eligible for NRBC. So last year we were not, and this year mm -hmm. we are. Eligible. And that was because of increased unemployment? Unemployment. It was unemployment. There's three criteria, unemployment, poverty rate, and out-migration, so loss of poverty. So right now, Carroll County unemployment is a little worse than the region. The region being New York, Vermont, and Inter Maine. So now that one of those criteria is met, the all Carroll County communities are eligible for 50-50 grants from NRBC, and they have a whole bunch of categories. And one of their categories is uh, infrastructure grants. Um, so we don't have to try to seek a waiver. So my, my plan all along was to, to seek an NRBC grant. They pay a much higher percentage than the USDA does. Um, so the tricky part is, okay, can you get a grant from two federal entities at the same time? 
And shockingly, I started sending messages and I got responses right back, wow. which I did not expect. So you can get a USDA grant and at the same time get an NBRC grant for the same project. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The 50% uh, grant for the, for the North Border Judicial Commission is, is, is a good deal. The, the cap is it can be no more than 80% federal money with these two entities. Total, combined. Total. Yeah. So if we were happen to get a Northern Borders grant, then the Tamworth taxpayers would have to pay no more than 20% of the total cost of the, tr of, of the Tamworth transportation approval. Wow. So that's, that's a hell of a deal. Uh, in March, they'll be putting out their deadlines for when things are due. The letter of intent is probably going to be due in April. Uh, the grant application is probably due in May. And the awards are made in the summer. Are they complicated grants? Uh, it, a lot easier than EPA, I'll tell you <laughs> that. Um, so, since we didn't apply before, I can't say. Um, but uh, they, all the federal agencies use that same 424 grant. When I work for the FAA, we use the 424 grant. Everybody does. Um, and when you have a, a form that's used by a wide range of agencies, nobody understands how to use it because it covers so much ground. All right. So it's confusing as hell. Um, but at least it's coming up fairly soon, and now we're eligible. Now we're eligible, which I... So that's, I was really surprised. Yeah. That we got eligible, and I get answers to my questions. <laughs> and so whenever you get answers, it makes you feel good. Uh, so that was, that was the highlight of my day. Uh -huh. That's all I got. Um, here's a message up there from Linda. You know, Linda says, maybe put up a sign at the entrance... To the transfer station <coughs> ahead of time. So tomorrow oh. I'll get a sign out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Is that all for That's it. Okay. Carl? I went to the Tamworth City Commission meeting on the 30th of January. And uh, I really want to say I think we have a, a really strong commission right now. And they're they're proactive and trying to get this thing straightened out. So they um, they are taking the <coughs> the report from Horizon, and they're actually making some adjustments to it because they feel that uh, Jim missed a few things, um, and they can actually come up with a better result. So even more gallons available. Yeah, and so then they their timeline would be to um, get their corrections done by the 10th of, of February and send a report to, to DES by the 27th of February. And they're probably being a little bit optimistic, but hoping they might get a response within a month. Mm -hmm. So by the end of March, um, they would hope to know what, what the DES is going to mm. Do. That's great. Um, yeah, and by the by the next meeting, which is the end of February, they'll they'll be able to report on what they're going to send. Mm -hmm. So that's um, that was about it from those guys. They are going to try. So you know the problem they have with uh, various kinds of wipes that uh -huh. end up mm -hmm. going the system and it. It ruins the grinder pumps if it makes if they make it that far. So they've sent out notices to the uh, owners of the properties, but of course, that's not always who's using the toilet. The owners pay the bill, but they might not even be there, right? Mm -hmm. So um, they're going to do some serious outreach and even put up signs in, in some of the town-owned buildings. Put the sign right beside the. Yeah, toilet, toilet, and put the wastebasket right beside the toilet, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just, you know, make it as simple and straightforward as possible to try to keep those wipes out of the system. I had Just, a, you know, you replace a pump. Yeah. A couple I had a thought hours. on that that I, I meant to talk to Rick about, but maybe I'll say it to you, and maybe you can remember to talk to Rick about it. Rick is the one person that we all know that probably looks in all these trash cans in the public buildings. If... If we could explain the problem to Rick, and if he happens to see wrappers from handy wipe kind of things, if he could let us know. 
Because maybe somebody is coming into that bathroom every day and using these things, or the townhouse, or, yeah, or the library. Or the library. Yeah. So he's the one person that you know might see something in the trash cans. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's happening in a public space. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so then, let's see. The other thing I had to report was um, about Family Day, on the Fourth of July, which uh, Chen is working on uh, organizing. And so we're going to have fireworks on the 1st, because that's the only time we could get the fireworks company to do it. And so she doesn't feel comfortable making the decision, because she's new to the job, about whether the parade should be on the 1st or on the 4th. And I thought we'd already discussed this a little bit. I thought we did. And, and sort of thought the 4th was a day. I think that's all right. I think we said that. Yeah, and then we get to have two celebrations instead of one. Yeah, and her her um, feedback that she had gotten. What day of the week is the first? It's a Saturday. The first is a Saturday. Saturday. Way it works. Um, and so the fourth is a Tuesday, Tuesday. Tuesday or something. Anyway, I mean, um, I do think in some ways, like I remember the one year that the fourth was on a Saturday, and I happened to be at the farmers market when the parade went by, and um, it was. I don't know. There was just something exciting about it. Like everybody was there, and the, the uh, what she was okay. hearing, uh, <laughs> thinking about, were uh, the vendors and of this farmers market. No, well, those vendors, no. but vendors oh. that sell things at the family yeah. day, oh. and they also sell things at the fireworks, right? Don't the people set up? Yeah. At the music before the fireworks, and so if it's two know. different days, um, you know, they'd set up in. Fireworks on first and um, two opportunities to sell. Well, that's that's my point. <laughs> um, if you can't go to both of them, then yeah. you know. Anyway, have some at some and some at the other. So, I, she, I think she just wanted us to make the decision. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we're comfortable with the first for fireworks band and the band and fireworks at the school, mm -hmm. and the fourth for the parade and family mm -hmm. day and because the, the do we like the parade? Coming in this direction and ending in the village? I do, personally. I think it's a good idea. Um, it seemed to work last year. Because then people like mingle and, you know, if it ends at Depot Road, nobody's like. Or if you end up at the school. Yeah, what's well, the school? Or if everybody oh, ends up at the school, school where all the activities are. But isn't there like a big break usually between the parade and the activities? No. no. The parade ends and then it's like. Family day. Family day. The, okay. the big gap is from like Family day till two the music. And, till the music and yeah. fireworks. I just remember there being a big gap. Yeah, that's which, that's when Family Day kind of winds down before the evening stuff winds up, which right. kind of is a nice reason for having another separate days. I think it's days. a good idea to have on two days because mm -hmm. then, yeah. I mean, and some of the Family I, Day not, stuff. I'm not likely really to go down there yeah. uh, for Family Day just because I'm watching the parade from here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yep. So family day is not in the village. It's it would be. This, oh, it it would well, it depends be. on. Yeah. It goes for back years, and forth. for years and years, it, the parade ended down there. It was family day. Oh, yeah. School, but, I see. Um, last year. Last year it was here. And it yeah. used to be here. Just kind of way nice. back. Yeah. 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 So anyway. Bringing back an older yeah. tradition. It all depends on what you remember, really. All right. I can report back. So, that. do we think we want it two different days? And well, that would be my inclination. <clears throat> and the parade to motion? end in town. I can make a motion that we uh, have uh, the band and the fireworks at the school on the first, and the parade ending in the village for the family day on the fourth. Second. Discussion? I think we had it. <laughs> Roll call vote. Did you say yes? Yes. Good yes. Good yes. Roberts yes. Four yes. Uh, five yes, zero no. Jeez, I haven't done that yet tonight. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Kelly? Uh, is that it for you, Carl? Yeah. yeah um, so I went to the TSIC meeting, and like Richard, I really only remember talking about the grant. Um, we were so busy choking on the. No. Yeah, it was quite a shock to us. We just had to figure out what our game plan was and talk about it and try to wrap our heads around it the best that we could and mm -hmm. have a plan going forward. I think that's mostly what we talked about. And then, not that it's a town entity or whatever, but I did have some communication about the revised RFP and as like a little sign don't. Um, I think that's it. Nothing else is coming up. 
Uh, I worked a little bit more with Shannon on um, coaching, talking about coaching for the after school sports <clears throat> and talking about um, summer programming and what that's looked like in the past. Um, and did a little work on the uh, added elements for the personnel policy revision. And then just like a lot of budget stuff, trying to find ways to trim where there's really not a lot of fat. Right. So some good conversations have come up around that, which has been inter interesting. Um, no update from me this week. Uh, so I guess we're moving on to public input. Can I step back in for one yes. second? So in this copy of the warrant, uh, our vote seems to show up at the end of each. Our That's it's, it's a template. <laughs> okay. <laughs> our vote that we haven't taken yet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, Thank you. Yeah, and I have to put that in because DRA is look, looks for it. Well, I'm kidding me. That's so a, they want to make sure the majority vote required. It doesn't say how we vote it. No, no some of them do. Some of them do. No, so oh. so we. We vote to support these before it goes to town meeting. At the public right, hearing. Right. At the budget hearing. Yeah. 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 It's, already it's, already it's, yeah. it's already in there, and that's why these are not. That's why general. I was wondering if there was. Oh, I did post vote. that on the. But we were sitting here last year. We were sitting here when we voted to support these. It wasn't at the budget no. hearing. Uh, yes, I'm po I'm 110 percent positive. <laughs> well, I we haven't voted anything, like and it's a bunch of five nothings. Now. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking back at this one. Yes, it's a template, and, and actually, I'm just realizing that I did post that on the website, and I should have taken those out of the, oh, <laughs> out of the website. Yeah. So definitely. I will ask Emily to take that down. I'm, okay. Well, yeah. I'm looking back at some meetings <laughs> yeah. because I'm okay. positive we were sitting right here. That is so interesting. That's not how I remember is, that. There's time to do it at the budget. Yeah. Hearing. Well, because we go through every line item, and then we we do the majority... Um, we kind of have to know. We do the voting. We kind of have to know about that before we can. Maybe we did it after the after, budget year. Maybe it was we after might the have done it. Exactly. I'm not saying we did it before. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just oh, that, that makes we, more sense. We didn't do it at the because because the, then you have all the information. Oh, the we week don't later vote on it. Vote vote no, we might have. I I'm pretty sure. He's thinking we came back here that, after. No, two I'm three twenty two. Government is not do that. What? I said two three twenty two government oversight. I'll look back at it because I'm I don't remember if it was the, it wasn't the same week as it wasn't the same night as the budget hearing. It might have been a week later. I thought you we did there. vote at the budget. I thought we did too. I'm did, looking did back. Did you guys have the two out. session budget? Meeting? No, but remember they said that they did the budget hearing at a. I think it was Linda was telling us a couple weeks ago that the that they held the budget review conversations. I don't know if they were technically all hearings several times. Mm -hmm. And she said that they went through the whole thing a couple of different times with yeah. the, with the public. Mm -hmm. I can see why you go through it twice because maybe the second time was for the vote or something. Yeah. Do we have any but, chance? But, but, but it's it's one thing to go through the line items of the budget. That's different than going through the warrant and voting on the warrant. Yeah. I think right. last year was also an exception be because yeah. it was two select board yeah. members that were doing it and forming it, and so I think they wanted the input of the rest of the select board just. So you did it that uh, way. Yeah. I think that's why we reviewed it as much because even Emery remembers reviewing it more often than we have. Well, but I, I don't how mind. Do you review it? Not, <laughs> I mean, I think it's something you that we can review that. I'm assuming on our. That you are. Yeah. You're right. It's yeah. something that we can review on our own. We don't have to do it at a public yeah. hearing and read it and whatever. But last year, I do believe that we did it in that way because yeah. they, they Mel and Becky and had we, to do yeah, that. Yeah, because work. it was. Yeah, yeah we, it makes sense. Do we also have to approve uh, um, Selectman's report? Or is that the selectman's letter. Yeah. The selectman letter. The, 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 the select board. Yeah, that could have been on your update. Sorry. <laughs> you wrote this. <laughs> oh, that was on my update. I wrote the draft of the yeah. select board letter, and then Keats gave a tweak and sh shifted order of things. But I just looked at the length based on past years. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't. I don't think, I think we have to. I think it's not a thing you have to vote on. You just oh, look okay. at it if you, have, right. if you if there's feedback that you want to give. Because that's just a rough draft. Set, you know, send me feedback and we can tweak it and then mm -hmm. we just publish it. Um, it's very thorough. I read it. I thought I liked it. The only thing that I wasn't sure was needed in there was the information about the office. The about office the office rearing. moves. Because yeah. that's, yeah. that's small potatoes. Right. Yeah. It did seem like... It maybe take maybe right. take that out. Yeah. 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 
Um, I agree with his assessment there. I think the, the reason I put it in there, and we can take it out, I don't care, yeah. was because it does impact a lot of, like, potentially impacts a lot of different people. So we were... Who come and use this room. Yeah. So I was explaining why. Mm -hmm. Why it was done. I think that a lot of the groups, though, that use the room have had the explanation. Mm hmm That's so... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, Pass I... <clears throat> Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, is there any public input? Yes. Ed. Hi. I would just draw. Oh. Go ahead on Zoom. Who was that? This is Maureen. Hi there. Hi, Maureen. Um, I've missed a few meetings because of different family obligations that took me away from home. Um, but I want to. My head is spinning trying to catch up to all that you've been doing <laughs> last year. <clears throat> and thanking you for all the work that you've been doing. Uh, grateful to the TSIC folks for their work that was presented tonight. Um, I'm wondering, is it deliberate that there was no public comment period at the beginning of tonight's meeting, or was that an oversight? I don't it's think not on the agenda. It's been, a, it's been a number of weeks. We've just had it at the end. At the end. Okay, because I, as I say, I've missed a few weeks. Yeah. I've read minutes, but I honestly can't say that I noticed that. Is is there a reason for that decision? Just trying to tighten the the schedule, but we can. Yeah, I mean, just to make the meetings more efficient. I think it's not. We don't legally. We are not bound to have two public inputs um, or any public or any input at or any at all. Actually, yeah. <laughs> um, and so I think just to see. I, uh, yeah, I actually understand. All of that. I just wanted to know where you were coming from in making the decision. So um, I see it as a move to being a little more efficient and trying to reduce the the many many minutes that you spend at these meetings every week. So I thank you. I think uh, Maureen too. We do still. I mean, it was not so much tonight because Bruno's our one in person. Um, guest who's been mm -hmm. here through the whole meeting. Um, but we often do have people who come in to speak to different agenda items. So I think my personal feeling, and we haven't discussed this, my personal feeling is that there's a liberal amount of public comment throughout our meeting um, without very much um, restriction at all. I know some boards only allow um, public comment during the designated time. I know some boards restrict um, people to speaking only once per subject or they reduce, you know, they set time limits and we don't do any of that. So um, I think that the, the idea of that, this public input agenda item is really just saying, if you've got something that we are not covering for the evening that you want to bring up, that's your opportunity to do it. It's not that we're saying that's the only time you get to talk during the meeting. Yeah, I try to allow uh, the public to chime in during different topics because we're here to vote mm -hmm. on public um, concerns. concerns. So that's what I, I don't allow people to talk throughout the meeting. That's what I try to do. So I think having public input once at the end is sufficient. So. Yeah, I think we are. You are very generous with your time. Um, sometimes I. And very seldom, but sometimes I want to mention something at the beginning of the meeting so it will be considered by you uh, during that meeting. I also, um, maybe it's a product of my Catholic school education, really try to um, only comment when public comment is uh, invited. So I, you know, I don't add comments to a discussion during your agenda items, I wait for a public comment period. So, you know, I appreciate um, the, your answers to my question. I understand that you're doing it to manage the meetings, which is a very, very important part of what you have to do. So thank you. Well, I would just say that if it's, um, a, if it's an important topic and you feel very strongly about <clears throat> saying something, maybe just, uh, you know, say something in the chat or even chime in once in a while if it's something you feel you have something that you'd like to say. Because um, I, I do try to, if we're about to vote on something that's important for the town, I like to hear, you know, what people have to say. So I just have a, a question, I guess point of reference or whatever, but um, 
I'm assuming that the changes and additions to the agenda would be from the board or from the office. Mm -hmm. Is if somebody had something that they wanted us to discuss, could the public also add anything to the agenda for us to discuss? Hmm. Uh, I just I don't know. No, I, I think either. the changes and additions no. to the agenda is for, for us. the board. But yeah. I mean, if there was something again, I mean, if somebody in the audience or on Zoom has something that they would like to bring up, I mean, we'll make sure I, I think that about, a change yeah. or an addition to the agenda from the public could be brought up during public input at the end. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because we still are here in a meeting, right. we can still have a discussion yeah. and vote on something. So. And if and if if there was something that somebody wanted on the agenda, then the appropriate channel is, and people do this Through all the, the time, is to reach yeah. out to Keats ahead of yeah. time yeah. and have it become that. part of the agenda. Mm -hmm. the, the only thing I worry about is that people start making additions to the agenda when really what they're adding should be public comment at the end. Right. Yep. So if it's a if it's a, a like a legit agenda item that's business that we as a board need to be addressing then somehow, the proper avenue is to then go. the proper avenue yeah. is to That's what I was assuming. Yeah. I just and, thought it would And right anybody now. can reach out to Keats and ask mm -hmm. to be put on the agenda. Yep. That's completely fine. And even if it was a phone call to Keats the day of, she could add it to the agenda. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Just to go through the process, I guess. Yeah. I, I, I understand where you're coming from. I understand that you have never interrupted someone that wanted to speak, myself or whoever it may be. But for years, you had, before and the end, the public comments. Why did you change it? it just As a courtesy, you would think, it's still available. It's there. Does it tie up that long? Is it that well, many it minutes? That it's, I mean, there's nothing I saying it's a cur can. courtesy for other people. Mm -hmm. Well, we can look back into adding it at the beginning. Um, and then I, we did just say if you feel strongly, chime in. Yeah. If you feel strongly I, about the public input. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yes, Ed. Ed, it wasn't looking that way. Thank you for taking my question. I just wanted to strongly encourage you to make sure that all your boards are following their posting requirements as at the time, the place, everything that's needed for postings. The 24 hour prior to the meeting start is very important. And I say this because if you have a non-public that you've scheduled but you didn't post the meeting correctly, then that meeting becomes a subject that people can go after. So it's just really important to make sure that the chair of that committee, commission, or the board make sure ahead of time that was that meeting posted 24 hours in advance before you meet. And if it wasn't, don't meet. Because you just wind up getting yourself into liability issues if, if somebody wishes to do so. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other public input, public comment, public input? Hearing no more public input and seeing no more message on Zoom um, with no non-public, motion to adjourn. What time is it? At 7.42. 7.42 p.m. Sign up, everybody.